Hello and welcome to another chat. This one's going to be about open source intelligence or OSINT. Um, I'd like to share something that I think is pretty cool. I've been working with some guys who are developing artificial intelligence or machine learning to count ships, basically. And this is really relevant um, and interesting technology. So like many other chats, this is unscripted, probably very obvious already. Also, I don't have a great mic. I always say that because not that I really care, but I'm not going to get a new mic but people always comment about it if I don't say it. So you hear the content, just a guy talking really. Um, let's get on with it. Open source intelligence has really come to the fore in the last few years, particularly in the war in Ukraine. We have masses of videos, photographs and so on, and they can be analyzed. One of the aspects though is satellite imagery. And this was used a lot in the build up to the invasion and since then. Satellite imagery that we think of is like this it's high resolution uh, photographs essentially, and it looks beautiful. I think it's visually stimulating, but also it provides a lot of very valuable intelligence. And that's the important thing for a defense analysis. So, this is just a, an older image of a a port in Russia looks great, but it's not the only type of satellite imagery. And actually, that's a good thing because this has certain key shortcomings. First one is clouds. Normal um, imagery satellites cannot see through cloud. They also can't see at night. So you only get good images when there's not much cloud and it's daylight, which really limits what you can pick up during a conflict or when it's more time sensitive. This is just a, an, a, an image showing where a satellite has passed over Crimea in Ukraine. And you can see it's white, that's just cloud. It's all, it's all the satellites see. There is a type of technology called synthetic aperture radar that can see through cloud and at night. So these satellites are really valuable. Um, this is an image that I have from Capella Space. They, they run so many satellites. They shared quite a lot with me late last year. Really lots of good things to say about these guys. The image here is of a port or a naval base in North Korea. And if we zoom in, we can see some ships along the seawall and also some ships at the side. And we can start to identify these ships. The satellite was north of this, so it's sort of upside down. If we flip it, you can get a more sort of human interpreted uh, image, and we can identify that as a Nazian class frigate. Obviously, some specialist sort of knowledge or skills required to do the identifications. Be honest with you, it's not always easy. We make more mistakes, and sometimes we can't really positively identify what we're looking at. Um, it is harder with this imagery. What you're seeing is the reflection of radar energy back off an object, and there's a lot of variables. But it's really powerful all the same. And it can give us quite a lot of information, especially at night and through cloud. The downside is that it's commercial. It has to be tasked. If you, as a regular uh, business, want to task it, obviously it costs money. Sometimes media or, or um, analysts get things um, pro bono. That's great. But it also means that they're not taking the same image again and again and again. They do. Yeah, unless they're tasked to do that, they're not just randomly taking images all over the world. So there is another type of SAR satellite, Sentinel-1, which is owned by European Space Agency, which is taking the same images time and time again, about once a week they revisit, depending on where you are in the globe, sometimes more. And this is open source because they make it freely available to average people. And there's a few places you can get it. Just look up Sentinel-1. This is from EO browser, there's also Playground. The downside though, and you can see it's very obviously here, is it's much lower resolution. So the images are not as, as clear as with the Capella space, but they're still very powerful. And what is cool, I think, is how much information we can get from the image on the right. That's what we're gonna talk about today. So let's bring it to a real world example. Um, you know, there's a war going on in Ukraine. Um, there's been a lot of disruption to maritime space. Obviously, most of the fighting is taking place on land, but there have been attacks on ships in the sea. And Russia has 
limited access to the sea, basically closed off parts of the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov to commercial shipping. And one question is, what is the impact of that? What is ultimately, what's the impact on world trade, on shipping numbers, things like that? One part of that is the Sea of Azov. And I'll show you a map in a moment. That is um, essentially an enclosed set of water um, in the top corner of the Black Sea. And Russia has completely dominated this. They've closed access to this. Um, so only Russian ships. These are Russian ships approaching a Ukrainian port after they've captured it. So the Sea of Azov, top right corner. It's got some famous cities there. There's lots of fighting going on. Key thing is that it is um, restricted access. You can only access it either from Russia, through the waterways, or via the Kerch Strait, which is between Russia and Crimea. Crimea is occupied by Russia since 2014. So de facto, Russia has absolute control of the Kerch Strait. There's actually a bridge which allows them to physically block it. Um, and their forces are there. So they can control who goes through the Sea of Azov, and they have on several occasions closed it off, including during parts of this conflict. One way we normally track shipping, which is not satellite uh, and not in the normal sense, is through AIS, automated information system. These are the transmissions that ships broadcast to tell you where they are and who they are and lots of information. This is really valuable data normally particularly in peacetime, people use it a lot for tracking shipping movements, but also if you're speculating on oil tankers or something like that, it can be very powerful. The downside is that it is not always, there are some black spots and it's not always available. So the Sea of Azov is generally a bit of a black spot, blind spot, there's not much data, it's a black hole. So here we have um, AIS, picture from a couple of days ago. And you can see there's ships in the Kerch Strait, but you can't really see many ships in Sea of Azov at all. They're there, but they're either not broadcasting, or even if they are broadcasting, no one's picking it up to then report it back through our open sources. So going back to these satellite images, the Sentinel-1 satellite does pass there quite regularly. Here is an image. And if we zoom in on this image, we can actually see the ships. So we can start counting ships, but this is not a human task. It's very difficult. Um, the, the ocean is fast. So this is where the Intel lab comes. These guys are collaborating with, it's not paid promotion or anything like that. I just think that what they're doing is really cool and I wanna share it with people. They have built deep learning algorithms about ships. Normally what they're doing is other stuff like this, um, you know, regular geo, ints. this is from their, website and they've done a whole load of case studies and of course commercial stuff. They take this SAR image, this synthetic aperture radar image, and they convert it to essentially data and it becomes something like this. This is their count of ships. In that image, previous one, there was 405 ships. And their accuracy here is about, well, greater than 99%, which is brilliant. They trained the algorithm on thousands of human curated training sets of ships and it's over 99% accurate on, in this case, in the Sea of Azov. I think there's a caveat there, obviously, as they use it in new, new scenarios, new variations, they'll find, you know, it might not always be 99%, but that's brilliant. In fact, I think it's incredible. It's better than the human would be if you were counting ships. So they can count ships and they can also work out and cluster them and start building geographical clusters. This is done automatically, but, you of course could geofence it and say this particular bit of water is has this name. This is a certain location, which is very relevant with you know shipping lanes and things like that. But this is auto clustering, and you can see that there were four hundred and five ships on February the eighth, which is before the conflict. And you can see the distribution north and south of the Kerch Straits and so on. February twentieth, just a couple of days before the invasion, four hundred eleven. So essentially the same number of ships, and you're pretty clear what the uh the, the shipping uh lanes and things like that are here's the clustered view but then there was the invasion on the 24th and by march 4th when the satellite passed we've got a really different distribution of ships and it's only 251 ships now so we've had over 150 ships fewer and 
The clustering again shows a different distribution. There's also things like they can look at like whether the ships are moving, stuff like that. There's, there's more to it, but this is already showing how powerful this technology is. March 16th, still during the conflict, you've now got more ships in the Sea of Azov. The overall count in the whole image is 279, so it's increasing, but nowhere near the previous levels. And here's the distribution of them and so on. So we can continue with this. There's a lot of potential, um, both in commercial sort of uh, applications of the intelligence and understanding the, the impact of war. What's really cool about it, just to summarize, is that it's using low resolution imagery, which as a human, we might not think is, is so good or cool, but it's incredibly powerful when it's analyzed. And secondly, they can do much more than this. Another example, a much more nuanced example, the same technology, same guys, Intel Labs, a bit older. Um, but here they are actually identifying when ships are doing ship to ship transfers. This is really relevant in sanction busting, you know, arms dealing or whatever, oil, of course. Um, there's many other scenarios they can do where they can detect certain activities which could be really relevant to either law enforcement or, or defense analysis in general. So really cool. Like I say, um, I think it's amazing what they can do with such low resolution image. I'm in, involved, but on peripherals, all the credit for all this technology is going to the Intel lab, not me. Um, but I wanted to share. Say this was unscripted. Thank you for listening. Find it interesting. Let me know. Please, please share it. So thank you.